Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. Inside Kate and the Queen's secret plan to control Meghan Markle. It's tough to discern what's fact and what's fiction in the ongoing saga of Kate Middleton versus Meghan Markle. Ever since Meghan married Prince Harry in May 2018, there have been countless headlines suggesting the two are at odds and locked in a battle of wills, although an exact reason for this supposed feud is murky. Did Meghan drive Kate to tears before her wedding, as The Sun reported in November 2018? Or is Kate jealous that the Queen supposedly favors the suit's alum? Then there's the gossip about Kate and Prince William feeling bitter toward Meghan for allegedly breaking up their trio with Prince Harry. Yep, the drama is a lot. But just when you thought the rumors had boiled over, investigative journalists Dylan Howard and Andy Tillich shared new anecdotes about the supposed feud in their June 2020 book, Royals at War. The untold story of Harry and Meghan's shocking split with the House of Windsor. Not only do Howard and Tillett suggest Kate and Meghan did clash, but they also allege Queen Elizabeth and Kate conspired to reign at Meghan's independence streak. Curious to learn more? Here's everything we know about Kate and the Queen's supposed plan. Did the Queen and Kate Middleton team up against Meghan Markle? Just because Meghan Markle and Prince Harry live in Los Angeles, as of March 2020, it doesn't mean they've escaped from the drama in the United Kingdom. That's because there are still rumblings about what went down between Meghan and Kate Middleton, which supposedly occurred at a dress rehearsal for the royal wedding. In a moment of tension, the issue of their children's titles had come up, and it allegedly unleashed a torrent of pent-up emotions, Dylan Howard and Andy Tillett reported in an exclusive excerpt from Wales at War. The untold story of Harry and Meghan's shocking split with the House of Windsor, obtained by LMT Channel. Apparently, Meghan was upset that her children with Harry would only ever receive a lordship title. As Howard and Tillett reported for the book, the bad feelings intensified when Kate supposedly didn't invite Meghan or Prince Harry to her 37th birthday party in January 2019. The duo was allegedly outraged by the snub, as Tillett and Howard described in Royals at War. Prince William tried to smooth over the tension in a call to Harry, allegedly warning him that Meghan was breaking up the family. Just a month before the birthday drama, the Duchess of Cambridge and Queen Elizabeth allegedly held a secret meeting to discuss Meghan's behavior, insiders told Tillett and Howard. Kate supposedly was the one who suggested the private conference. So what happened in this so-called meeting? The Queen offered to take Meghan Markle under her wing, as shared exclusively with LMT Channel, Royals at War. The untold story of Harry and Meghan's shocking split claims that Queen Elizabeth shared Kate Middleton's concerns about Meghan Markle and took it upon herself to help the actor navigate royal life. The Queen didn't want to repeat the mistakes she made with Princess Diana, insiders alleged. It's not clear how exactly the Queen mentored Meghan, or if her efforts were well received. Interestingly enough, Dylan Howard and Andy Tillett reported in Royals at War that the Duchess of Sussex was intent on marching to the beat of her own drummer, regardless of what anyone else said. Meghan's strong will was apparent when she delayed the first photo, up with baby Archie, who was born in May 2019. She also didn't pose for a photo outside of the hospital, as Kate did for her three children. Once it became clear Meghan was intent on doing her own thing, the tension with Kate intensified, Howard and Tillett's book alleges. Kate Middleton won't say sorry to Meghan Markle. Dylan Howard and Andy Tillett reported in Royals at War, the untold story of Harry and Meghan's shocking split, that Kate Middleton and Meghan Markle reached a standstill in their supposed battle when the Duke and Duchess of Sussex moved to Los Angeles. However, 
This doesn't mean the two are besties now. Howard wrote in an exclusive excerpt from Royals at War. Kate made visible attempts to get along with Carrie and Meghan in the past year, but now things have changed. Insiders told me that Kate's standing in the palace has never been so high, so she feels no obligation to make nice with them. She will not be apologizing or attempting to mend fences until they reciprocate the efforts she and William have been making with them. Of course, Meghan and Kate might be doing just fine. Only time will tell how this all plays out. Another report. This is what Prince Harry misses most about the UK. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle inadvertently picked a tough time to relocate to Los Angeles, California. A global pandemic is just not an ideal setting to get settled and explore a new area right. Although the couple seems to be adjusting to their new home quite fine despite the hurdles, there are rumors Prince Harry is struggling in Los Angeles. And he might be having a hard time considering he's away from everything he knows, including a popular British sport. This came to light on June 24, 2020, when England Rugby posted a video to its Instagram account, which included a cameo from rugby enthusiast Prince Harry. During the video, he declared, We all miss rugby. From hosting charity events at the clubhouse to transforming game facilities into food banks for frontline workers, the mission is all about helping others. Joining this campaign is a perfect fit for Prince Harry, as it combines two of his passions, philanthropy and rugby. In fact, he's the honorary president of England Rugby and went with the team to Japan in 2019 to watch them play in the World Cup final. So what else does Prince Harry miss about his old life? It's something very close to his heart. Prince Harry reportedly misses being in the army. Stepping down from the royal family meant Prince Harry could no longer serve in the army, which is something he reportedly misses. Harry said in 2013 about why he loves military life, I'm one of the guys. I don't get treated any differently. Perhaps Harry's nostalgia is made worse by how quickly he makes it happen. An inside source told The Telegraph he has been telling friends that he still can't believe this has happened. He can't believe his life has been turned upside down. The source added he was in a happy place when he was serving in the army. Then he met Meghan Markle and since then life has been great. But I don't think he foresaw things turning out quite as they did. The source clarified that the Duke of Sussex doesn't blame Meghan for what happened. They explained, there is just a sense that he might have been better protected if he was still in the army. It's understandable that Harry would miss the sense of normalcy that the army brought to his life, as he probably doesn't get that feeling in many other situations. Plus, he had a decade long career in the military. Although leading the army was ultimately Prince Harry's choice, he never expected to lose rugby too. But hopefully, the world will find its new normal sooner rather than later. Another analysis. This is how Meghan and Harry are gaining their full financial independence. When Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced in January 2020 their decision, to step down as senior members of the royal family, many people wondered how they'd bankroll their lives without the Queen for support. And there were plenty of questions about what their plan to become financially independent actually entailed. The whole announcement was pretty vague. Although their financial plans aren't necessarily anyone's business, especially considering the royal security team won't be funded by the U.S. government, as their rep relayed in a March 2020 statement to the BBC. However, after Harry and Meghan solidified their move to Los Angeles and reportedly settled in Tyler Perry's mansion, the topic of their finances came up again. CNBC theorized the couple could make tons of cash with sponsored Instagram posts and entertainment-based deals, to name a few possibilities. The Times reported, Speaking of, 
Megan did Inc. a voiceover deal with Disney, but her earnings went to the wildlife conservation, charity elephants without borders. So where does the money come from? It looks like the questions surrounding how Meghan and Harry are gaining their full financial independence have finally been answered. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle scored a big deal. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are settling right into their new lives in America, with the pair inking a deal with the New York-based Harry Walker Agency for speaking engagements, the Los Angeles Times reported on June 24, 2020. The agency, which boasts a long list of high-profile clients, the Obamas, Bill Clinton, Serena, and Venus Williams, ETC Full Stop, will help the pair book moderated discussions and keynote speeches with trade associations, corporations, and community forums, the LAT noted. The two will reportedly discuss racial justice, gender equity, and environmental concerns as well as mental health, the outlet stated. As Mike Allen reported for Axios in 2017, President Barack Obama typically earns $400,000 for speaking engagement, while Michelle Obama gets paid $200,000. And a talk from former President Bill Clinton supposedly runs for $250,000. Although it's not clear how much the couple will earn with their new gig, we imagine it will be a pretty penny. Not only are the Duke and Duchess of Sussex in high demand, but they also have plenty of knowledge to share with the world. We smell big money. We don't know about you, but we think this deal is further proof Meghan and Harry won't return to the royal family anytime soon. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more LMT videos about your favorite stuff for coming soon subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Don't stop.